everyone so we are back with our fourth video on business environment and today i'm going to talk about liberalization privatization globalization the economic reforms which happened in 1991 but before that we would like to have some recap what were the situation of india before independence or at the time of independence rather and then what happened in 1991 and what solutions were given to the same thing this topic is there in your book as introduction to the reforms of 1999 uh, the reforms of 1991 and we need to know these things that what exactly led to these reforms that is why did the government at that time initiate liberalization privatization and globalization you've already done these three terms in your 10th standard liberalization means that we were just winding up with the permission of quota system or a simple licensing was just taken away uh, no license were required for business uh, to start when we talk about private sector disinvestment was happening that was the shares or the major share holding of public sector was being sold to the private sector and when we talk about globalization the indian economy was being more uh, comprehensive like it was being uh, uh, we were trying to uh, rather we would say the indian economy was being cohesive that we were trying to comprehend the indian economy with the world economy now let's start and just take a, a brief glance and recapitulate that what was happening in india at the time of independence at the time of indian in, uh, independence our economy was totally agricultural and rural we know it why agriculture and rural because approximately 70% of the people were working in agriculture so majorly we were dealing in uh, 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 the irrigation and all those facilities and 85% was living in villages that's why it was rural when we talk about the production capacity we were using poor technology depleted technology we did not have latest technology so that was another drawback which we actually had to face at that time if we talk about is the widespread communicable diseases and the mortality rate it was very high at that time because there was no good public health system if you talk about if you compare that time at the time of independence and today see we have a lockdown because of corona virus and comparatively our public health system is much better we are able to fight this pandemic maybe just because of lockdown or but otherwise also the doctors are running 24/7 and they are doing their bit so whichever way we take that time at the time of independence there were some problems coming up and what exactly did we face so if we talk about before 1991 that is before happening of lpg at the time of independence somewhere around 1947 and after that this was the condition and after this somewhere around late 80s in between to 1991 this was a condition so what we started uh, why we initiated liberalization privatization globalization because we wanted economic development for our economy and for our country we do wanted to talk about the development of the country development in what sense see our economic growth rate was not going very high so we wanted a better and reasonable standard of living we wanted people to ha have availability of goods which are not available to them and the western countries were using them so we wanted the economic development we wanted an economic structure which was more stable so we had initiated mixed economy but still private sector uh, was not that much uh, coming up in comparison to the public sector public sector still had the major stake next was economic policies the policies initiated by the ruling party at that time or the government in power at that time there were committee set up there were many plans were being made many things were being done but uh, the result was not as good as it should have been then our economic planning planning first plan economic plan had failed we had to plan replan and the uh, five years economic planning was not coming out as we wanted it to be economic indices when talk in terms of gdp per uh, capita income you talk about net disposable income like that per, per person disposable income there was a, a lot of satisfaction was not there why because national income or the contribution to the national income could not be seen and because of that what happened was that in totality the economic growth was not visible and then infrastructural factors we had lack of schools we had lack of uh, hospitals we in, uh, never had i mean the, the total the roads were not very well developed there were more of uh, kacha houses instead of having pakka houses so there were so many things which we have actually been doing in our uh, economics or we been doing in our sst and we could be will you'll be able to relate it that exactly this was the condition at that time 
So at the time of independence, this was our problem. Before 1991, uh, this was our problem. What solutions were we trying to look at? We were trying to look at the solution. First, we wanted economic growth. So for economic development, we were looking for economic growth with good standard of living. And we wanted uh, unemployment to be less. We wanted people to be having better uh, access to money, income. So we wanted to talk about lesser of poverty. Then we wanted our economy to be self-reliant. Why? Because we were still importing some of our staple food uh, even at one time we had to import um, this wheat from uh, uh, USA so that was that's a big thing like how can that is our staple food and we are short of our uh, own staple food despite of being an aggregated economy so we were not very self-reliant then uh, there were not much of industry so industry setups were required and we wanted to reduce inequalities because rich were becoming richer and poor were becoming poorer and there was a lot of inflation uh, adopt a socialist pattern based on equality we wanted everybody to be treated equally see we had a public distribution system ration system and uh, uh, people were given uh, the food that is rice dal atta everything kerosene oil as per the number of people in the house that was not the right system we did not have uh, uh, the private uh, shops which were there they were very very expensive so people could not afford it then the aam aadmi could not afford it so there were so many things which were at that time somewhere around uh, 19 late 80s 89 90 it was not up to the mark so the change was required and at that time the uh, LPG happened and with LPG came out a remarkable change and what was a remarkable change I'll just give you the point outs so I was just telling you about the features of industrial policy 1991 the government reduced the number of industries under compulsory to six so there were six industries which were reduced I mean uh, see what happened in nine after 1991 when we talk about liberalization privatization globalization so, first of all, the under compulsory licensing that the government had under it was reduced to six. Public sector was de-reserved, four industries of strategic importance were given to public sector, the rest were privatized. Disinvestment was carried out, like I told you, that the public sector shares were in the private sector. Now, here you have to public and private sector. This is not a public company and private company. The public sector is that is under government control, the private sector is that is where private organizations, individuals work. Like the sole proprietorship and companies come in the private sector. And if you talk about departmental undertaking, or statutory corporations, or government companies, this is the public sector. Policy towards foreign uh, capital was liberalized, like there was 100% foreign direct investment was permitted. So, because if you remember, I told you about uh, uh, this environment, political environment, and we discussed in 1977, the uh, Janta Party, what did Foreign companies, ko bhaga diya tha, though there were no foreign companies operating in India, IBM, Coca-Cola, I gave you the example. Then in 1991, all these companies were re-invited properly. 100% uh, foreign direct investment ke saath. then foreign investment promotion board was set up to in uh, to ask foreign companies to come and invest in our country then growth of industrial units uh, more initiative was taken for industrial sector to hum jab baat karte hain primary secondary or tertiary sector ki humne industrialization yani ki humne manufacturing ke bare mein baat karni shuru kar di to humne secondary sector ko zyada importance dene ki koshish karni shuru kar di small scale sector was uh, assured help aapne small business kiya hua already plus one mein that is your ninth chapter so there also uh, you have uh, there were a lot of initiative nsic was set up and then dic's were set up a lot of initiatives have been taken up at that time so in 1991 ke reform ke baad sare changes aaye jisme sabse liberalization ki what do we mean by liberalization like i have given you lpg out here liberalization ka matlab kya hai ki indian business and industry pe license jo the bahut sare uh, jo goods the jin pe license lagte the bina license ke aap wo business shuru nahi kar sakte the चाहे वो छोटा बिजनेस था या बड़ा बिजनेस था और अगर बिजनेस छोटे से बड़ा करना होता था तो आपको लाइसेंस चाहिए होता था परमिशन चाहिए होती थी गवर्नमेंट की प्राइस फिक्सिंग के लिए आपको गवर्नमेंट की परमिशन चाहिए होती थी तो ये सारी जो लाइसेंसिंग सिस्टम था ये सारा का सारा अबॉलिश कर दिया गया कुछ एक चीजों को छोड़ दिया गया एट द एट टाइम जैसे अभी एट प्रेजेंट हमारा हमें लाइसेंस चाहिए होता है अब गवर्नमेंट से परमिशन चाहिए होती किस चीज के लिए अल्कोहल के लिए हमें चाहिए होती है न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स के लिए वेपन्स के लिए न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स हम बनाएंगे भी नहीं बट वेपन्स की रखने के लिए 
और देन uh, हम बात करें uh, किस चीज़ के लिए हमें लाइसेंस की ज़रूरत होती है एल्कोहल फार्मास्यूटिकल्स के लिए मेडिसिन के लिए सो so, इन सब बिजनेस के लिए अभी भी चाहिए होती है बट बहुत सारे ऐसे बिजनेस थे जो जनरल बिजनेस थे और जिसके लिए जैसे सीमेंट था वो भी लाइसेंस पे मिलता था तो ये सारे के सारे लाइसेंस को अबॉलिश कर दिया गया था आते हैं इंडियन बिजनेस इंडस्ट्री ऑल ऑल अननेसेसरीली कंट्रोल्स एंड रिस्ट्रिक्शंस वर रिमूव अननेसेसरी जितने भी बेकार कंट्रोल्स थे वो सारे हटा दिए गए थे एंड ऑफ लाइसेंस परमिट कोटा जो आपको लाइसेंस परमिट कोटा मिलता था वो ख़त्म कर दिया गया था ठीक है और इंडस्ट्री जैसे मैंने यहाँ पर एग्जाम्पल दिया हुआ है कंज्यूमर गुड्स वो जितनी भी इंडस्ट्रीज थी सारे के सारे लाइसेंस के अंडर आती थी तो वो उनमें डी लाइसेंसिंग कर दी गई थी तो इसके फीचर्स क्या हैं अबॉलिशिंग लाइसेंसिंग रिक्वायरमेंट्स इन मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज एक्सेप्ट शॉर्ट लिस्टेड वन विच द गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटेड तो उसमें उस समय उन्होंने एल्कोहल फार्मास्यूटिकल अटोमिक एनर्जी और बहुत सारी चीज़ जिन पर उन्होंने लाइसेंस रखे हुए थे देन फ्रीडम इन डिसाइडिंग स्केल ऑफ बिजनेस आपको पहले छोटा बड़ा बिजनेस बड़ा बिजनेस एक्सपैंड करने के लिए परमिशन लेनी पड़ती थी मैंने अभी बताया वो रिस्ट्रिक्शन हटा दी गई थी रिमूवल ऑन रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन मूवमेंट ऑफ गुड्स ठीक है तो हम बात करते हैं इंटरस्टेट इंटरस्टेट मूवमेंट और बाहर अब्रॉड अगर आपको याद हो आपको नहीं याद होगा बेशक आज के पेरेंट्स एक शब्द हुआ करता था तब उस समय हम लोग छोटे हुआ करते थे तो हम लोग सुनते थे एक शब्द इम्पोर्टेड गुड्स तो हमारे टाइम पे बड़े ज़्यादा इंपोर्टेड गुड्स आते थे तो हमें इंपोर्टेड गुड्स से इतना रिलेशन नहीं पता था कि इसका मतलब क्या होता है लेकिन बाद में समझ आया कि जो चीज़ बाहर से लेकर आते हैं और अपने देश में इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसको इंपोर्टेड गुड्स कहा जाता है तो इमेजिन कीजिए कि हमें मूवमेंट ऑफ गुड्स बिकेम ईजियर क्योंकि हमने दूसरी कंट्रीज़ के साथ ट्रेड करना शुरू कर दिया था जब हम ग्लोबलाइजेशन की बात करेंगे तो इस बात की आपको और क्लैरिटी आएगी ठीक है फ्रीडम एंड फिक्सिंग ऑफ प्राइस ऑफ गुड्स आप गुड्स अपने हिसाब से प्राइस कर सकते थे रिडक्शन इन टैक्स रेट एंड लिफ्टिंग अननेसेस कंट्रोल बहुत ज़्यादा टैक्स रेट हाई टैक्स रेट लेविड था बिजनेसमैन के ऊपर बहुत ज़्यादा ड्यूटीज़ लगती थी सो लॉड ऑफ अबॉलिशन हैपन एंड देन इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट के टाइम पे भी इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट के लिए भी बहुत सारी एग्जामेशन्स देनी पड़ी थी एट दैट टाइम सो दैट यू नो द पीपल गुड कैरी ऑन बिजनेस ईजिली इवन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी की एग्जामेशन थी देन देर वॉज ड्यूटी ड्रॉ बैक सो मेनी थिंग्स वर देर विच वर गिवन टू पीपल सिंपल सिंप्लीफाइंग प्रोसीजर फॉर इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट मैंने भी आपको बता दिया है तो एसी जीज और जो आपकी स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन्स हैं और ई पी जीज हैं इकोनॉमिक प्रोसेसिंग जोन्स हैं वो इसके बाद सब सारा का सारा इनिशिएट हुआ मेकिंग इट ईजियर टू अट्रैक्ट फॉरन कैपिटल एंड टेक्नोलॉजी टू इंडिया और फॉरन कैपिटल और टेक्नोलॉजी दोनों को इंडिया में इन्वाइट किया गया बिकॉज वी आर सफरिंग फ्राम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ पुअर टेक्नोलॉजी ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज प्राइवेटाइजेशन वॉट डू वी मीन बाई प्राइवेटाइजेशन प्राइवेटाइजेशन मीन्स दैट द a role of the public sector was reduced and private sector was increased what was the purpose of privatization it was that uh, the private sector was initially very inactive because they will not get, they did not want to uh, put their money into the uh, big ventures where infrastructure development was uh, required and they they wanted to earn quick profit which was not happening so initially the public sector took the initiative and they came in and later on the private sector became very reluctant so at this time when lpg happened private sector had to be involved why because ours was an in, uh, mixed economy so starting with privatization it means transfer in the public sector enterprise to private sector so whatever was there for the public sector was transferred to the private sector like i have already given you example that from 17 industries to 8 to 5 and only 3 industries were left to the public sector as were uh, given open uh, hand for the private sector to join in reduce role of public sector this is your definition right out here so we say reduce role of public sector and giving greater role to the public uh, private sector in the nation building process so private sector got a bigger role it got a greater role to play uh, because our economy was a mixed economy and what were the features policy of planned disinvestment was happening in the public sector was adopted so that private sector could involve itself more it was decided to refer the sick public sector units to bifr what is bifr it's board for in, uh, industrial and financial reconstruction now there were sick units in the public sector which were not doing well either they were revived revived in the sense that they were uh, given time to come back to and uh, come back and earn profit or once they could not revive they were completely shut down and we never wanted to continue with such kind of units second a national renewal fund was set up national renewal fund was set up for those uh, public sector units where employees were uh, retrenched or uh, they were redeployed and in case anybody wanted voluntary retirement uh, the same uh, voluntary retirement was given with compensation to the people so bifr and national renewal fund nrf was set up 
Now, transfer of public sector resulted in dilution of government ownership beyond 51% to the private sector. So, private sector had a much bigger role to play in comparison to what it had immediately after independence. I told you they were one not initially interested because they wanted quick profit and second the reason was that uh, they did not uh, want to employ that much of money or they did not want to invest that much of money. Now, private sector had to involve itself and put that much of money as well as RICO itself. Now, globalization. Now, making an Indian economy cohesive with the world economy was very important aspect which we cover under globalization. And what happened with globalization? It means integration of various economies of world leading towards a cohesive global economy. So, this is your definition again when we talk about globalization. Till 1991, government had followed a policy of stick regulation in terms of import and you know why they had followed because uh, they were we were what we were trying to do was we were importing more and exporting comparatively less and import and export was not allowed lot of uh, 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 lot of taxes were levied and lot of restrictions were there and a uh, lot of formalities were, were there a lot of paperwork was there so this all was relaxed after 1991 in terms of value as well as volume you know you could not do um, uh, you could not do export beyond a limit or you could not import beyond a limit so all these relaxations were given there are a lot of the lot of uh, duty free items were involved later on not all duty free kind of exemption was given uh, which was called duty drawback uh, for the people who were exporting so regulations were licensing of import a lot of strict restriction was there in uh, getting license for imports as well as exports tariff restrictions i told you just now taxes uh, levies were there then quantitative restrictions you could not get up, uh, beyond a particular item up, up, uh, beyond a particular quantity uh, from uh, either at the time of importing or you could not export beyond a particular quantity now globalization involved at that time globalization involved what it said that an increase in level of interaction and interdependence among various nations of the global economy they said now what we are doing is we are not letting india be all alone it has to interact and have has to uh, if uh, if some economy if india is uh, depending on some economy for some particular kind of inter, uh, product so indian economy will also uh, the other economy will also try to exchange that kind of product they we wanted to create a good balance of uh, trade and payments all right physical geographical gap and political boundaries were no longer a barrier why because these barriers were basically removed so when we talk about globalization what did the feature involve it involved free flow of goods and services across the nations so it was not restricted within the nation but beyond nation things started working on free and flow of capital across the nations i told you 100 percent fdi was allowed that is why so many multinational after 1991 started uh, initiating and coming to india then free flow of uh, information technology a lot of exchange of technology happened of course we were not very good with uh, technology uh, usually we were not we do have people who have a good technological brain but that we did not develop too much of because we did not have that kind of infrastructure or we did not have that kind of a base so what we started doing was we started taking good technology from outside and then started using in our own country then free movement of people across the border that is why people started working abroad and uh, though it has led, uh, led to brain drain but that somehow it did benefit at that time a uh, common acceptable mechanism for settlement of disputes if you talk about uh, wto that's what they do in case of uh, dispute among nations for anything uh, wto intervenes and global governance perspective now if you talk about global governance perspective uh, we have global agency who look after the uh, different aspects like for example at this time of lockdown uh, WHO has been intervening everywhere I hope privatization liberalization and globalization is clear to you and along with this we have to take up one more topic uh, that is impact of uh, LPG on the business and industry as well as uh, the managerial response that will be taking up in the next video enjoy yourself